Hi, I'm Evan Parks, and I'm a psychologist here to answer your questions about chronic pain. What I want to get into today is a little bit of my story of how I even got interested in the work that I'm doing and uh, give you a little bit of an idea of what's the connection between psychology and chronic pain. A lot of the patients that I see as they come in uh, to sit with me uh, after they've talked with the physical therapist, and they've talked with the occupational therapist, they've met with the physician and the nurse, and then it's time for them to meet with me. Uh, they have this very kind of puzzled look on their face wondering, now exactly what am I doing talking to a psychologist? How is that going to help me? I mean, I have real pain. I've got this uh, mechanical issue going on with my neck or my back and you know, surgeries. You know, I don't see how psychology is going to be, you know, even related to that. I mean, I have real pain. So before I even get into that, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about myself and how I even got interested in the work that I'm doing now. So I was back in college and I was interested in helping people, but really not sure exactly how was I going to get involved um, in doing work with people. And during some of the experiences that I've had in college, I found that uh, many people have problems. People who are leaders, uh, people who are professors at the university where I was attending, um, businesses have a struggle with uh, conflict and relationships. Obviously, marriages did. I knew that, saw that. And so I actually got interested in helping people solve problems. Um, I saw a lot of need uh, among people who were leaders specifically uh, to deal with some of the issues that they have in their own life to make them more effective in the work that they do and helping others, leading others, and uh, bringing about uh, change. So I started taking psychology classes and got really interested in how the mind works and how problems develop. And so in graduate school, I focused on uh, psychology. And then right after my master's degree, I had this opportunity to work for a couple years in community mental health. And probably of all the things that I've, I've done work-wise, that has been one of the funnest, most interesting jobs that I've had. Uh, I spent a lot of time uh, out on the road with... Um, uh, state police, uh, with the sheriff department, with the city police, uh, intervening in crisis situations, uh, being on the scene after somebody had taken their life or had, um, uh, you know, been in some type of altercation, uh, been in a lot of people's homes, uh, seeing the conditions of people's lives uh, when they are living with a lot of dysfunction or trauma or abuse. And that was so important, so educational for me, and just drove me even further into wanting to understand people. But one of the things that really stood out for me uh, in the work that I was doing then uh, as a young psychologist is I realized that most healthcare was oriented toward helping people with symptoms, symptom management. If somebody had depression, um, how do you just manage the symptom of depression? You know, the sleep, the appetite, the energy, um, kind of biological changes that take place uh, with depression. Same thing with anxiety. A lot of medications are geared toward uh, reducing the symptom of anxiety. And I thought, well, if a person then goes off of that medication or whatever the treatment is, um, the underlying problem that they have in their life, uh, the struggles that they have, the things that are out of place in their life, um, uh, the lack of health in their life is, is still going to be there. And I realized that health care was really more oriented towards sick care. And it wasn't oriented toward helping people move from where they're at toward a greater degree of health. And I really began to be interested in how the mind and body work and how people can move from dysfunction toward health, from 
illness, uh, from a, a state of uh, struggle uh, toward having balance in their life. And as people move in this direction, they actually move away from the things that are causing the symptoms that are in their life. And that is one of the basic ideas that I've always believed in and always have been trying to help people with. So when it comes to chronic pain and chronic pain management, the uh, primary emphasis that I have is helping people understand what is causing uh, the nervous system to be in the state that it's in and helping them move from a state of an overreactive oversensitive nervous system to a state where there is balance in their nervous system. And as they do that, the issues that they have with chronic pain become less and less significant in their life, and they're able to move on toward those things that are really important to them and not rely on a healthcare system that is primarily focused on just trying to stop the sensation of pain rather than the underlying issues that are happening in the nervous system that cause it to function the way it functions so that regardless of what a person is doing, if they're sitting, if they're standing, if they're lying down, if they're trying to sleep, their brain is still producing this pain when it shouldn't be. That's what I'm really interested in helping people with. So I look forward to talking with you again, and we're going to dive into the sections of the book that have to do with how to understand how chronic pain develops. That's where we begin. Uh, so we're going to be covering in this series answers to your questions about chronic pain, all the information that's in the book. Look forward to talking with you again. Take care.